Hello and welcome to this Alesis Drums tutorial. Today, you'll learn the basics of the drum trigger settings on the Alesis Surge and Nitro modules, and how and why to adjust them. First, let's go over why it's important to know how to adjust your kit's trigger settings. Every Alesis drum kit ships with a standard set of settings, which is meant to be as general as possible to be playable by all kinds of drummers. It's both normal and recommended to adjust your kit's settings to suit your playing style. This is a gradual process, and most drummers slowly tune their kit over time and make adjustments as needed. So, let's dive into what trigger settings we can adjust, and how they affect the way the kit responds. In this video, I'll be using a Nitro module, but everything we cover here will also apply to the Surge module. Power on your module, and press the Utility button to access the module's trigger settings. Next, hit the pad of the drum voice you want to edit you'll see that pad's pad select button light up, and its current trigger settings will be shown on the display. To edit a parameter, use the arrow buttons to increase or decrease the value of the setting, and use the page select button to change which parameter you're editing. Not all parameters will be relevant to all pads, so depending on which pad you're currently editing, some parameters won't be available. For instance, the kick drum doesn't have a pad rim sensitivity setting because the kick drum doesn't have a rim zone. Sensitivity controls the sensitivity of a pad's drum head. A higher sensitivity value will yield louder hits with less force, and a lower sensitivity value will require more force to yield louder hits. Threshold controls the amount of force needed to trigger the pad's voice. A low value will trigger the voice with a very light hit, while a high value will require more force to trigger the voice. Crosstalk controls the amount of crosstalk reduction between different pads. Crosstalk refers to how the transfer of force while playing the kit can travel through the drum rack or the floor and cause unwanted voice triggers from pads that aren't being hit. A higher value will reduce the probability of this happening. However, keep in mind that if this value is set too high, Hitting multiple pads at the same time may result in some of them being silenced, as the module will interpret the simultaneous hits as crosstalk. Curve controls the pad's velocity curve. This determines the relationship between how hard you hit the pad and the volume of the drum voice that's triggered. Rim sensitivity controls the sensitivity of a pad's rim, just like the sensitivity setting, a higher value produces louder hits with less force, and a lower value requires more force to produce quieter hits. Splash sensitivity controls the hi-hat pedal's sensitivity for triggering a hi-hat splash voice, instead of the pedal's usual closed hi-hat voice. Setting this parameter to a high value will increase the likelihood that lightly tapping the hi-hat pedal will produce the splash voice. Once you're done adjusting each trigger setting, make sure to press the Save button to save your changes. If you don't, your settings will be reverted back to their default values after turning the module off. The last two settings in the utility menu pertain to MIDI trigger settings. The first of these is Local Mode. When Local Mode is on, your kit will trigger the drum voices in the kit that's loaded on the module. When local mode is off, your kit will bypass the module's drum voices and instead trigger the sounds in any device connected to the module's MIDI out port. The other MIDI setting in the utility menu is general MIDI mode. You can use general MIDI mode to access the module's non-drum sound programs from an external device or keyboard, including piano, strings, and more. When general MIDI mode is off, MIDI channel 10 in the module will trigger its internal drum voices. This is the default setting. When general MIDI mode is on, MIDI channel 10 in the module will trigger general MIDI percussion voices. To be able to trigger non-drum sound libraries with your connected external MIDI device, you'll need to send a program change message from the external device to change the sound program on the module. Each sound program uses one of 16 MIDI channels, so you'll also need to change the MIDI channel on your external device to trigger the corresponding sounds. For example, since drum sounds are dedicated to channel 10, your external device will need to send MIDI over channel 10 in order to trigger the drum sounds. 
For more info on using the MIDI and USB connections on your Alesis drum module, check out your module's user guide, as well as the link in the description for a summary of the general MIDI sounds. Before we wrap up, let's learn how to perform a factory reset on the Surge and Nitro modules. This can come in handy if you're unhappy with multiple trigger settings and simply want to start from scratch. Keep in mind that doing this will cause all settings to be reset to their default values. While the unit is powered off, press and hold both arrow buttons, then press the on-off button to turn the module on. The display will show RST followed by three hyphens to confirm that the module settings have been reverted back to their factory values. So, now you know the basics of adjusting the trigger settings on your Alesis Surge or Nitro drum module. For more resources on how to use your Alesis drum kit and module, be sure to check out our Alesis support playlist and head over to alesis.com forward slash support, where you'll find loads of relevant information in the Alesis knowledge base, as well as a portal to reach out to the Alesis technical support team if you need further assistance. Thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you next time.